As you can see, the top floor got hit several times. The house across the street. And this was our old position. We had the stove here. This is a table for working on weapons and stuff. Had this couch, had another couch here. This was the kitchen. What can you tell me about your views of America? What, what kind of a country is America? It's a beautiful, beautiful place. I love it very much. Uh, it has a fascist government right now. I was born in 1960. Things were nice back then, but uh, since maybe 1980, it's been downhill, you know. The government in the United States uh, is is a criminal government. It doesn't represent the people of the United States. It represents the oligarchs and the corporations. Well, you're not the first uh, American fighting in this conflict that mm -hmm. I've interviewed. I actually talked to a guy codenamed Franco, uh, Mark Paslavsky, mm -hmm. uh, who was fighting on the Ukrainian side mm -hmm. in the Donbass battalion. And he said mm -hmm. a That's lot of... the guy that got killed, right? The guy got killed mm -hmm. in Ilovaisk. Fuck him. Well, he said some sim similar things to what you're saying about wanting to fight the oligarchies. You know, tough shit for Mark getting killed. Uh, he should have stayed home. You got to make sure that you're, you know, that you know who you're fighting for. You know, he was fighting on the wrong side, and he picked a fight with some badass dudes that put his ass in the ground. And that's what we'll do to all the Nazis that come to Donbass. We we'll put them in the ground. We we'll take their guns and bury their bones. Do you ever see yourself going back to the United States? No, uh, I can't go back to the United States uh, because uh, I would probably land and U.S. Marshals put the chains on me and take me straight to prison. You know, they'd say I was a terrorist. You know, I'm not a terrorist. I'm just defending good people here. I'm defending myself. I only shoot guys that are trying to shoot me. Sorry. But it's not a Russian invasion at all. It's the people of Donbass saying, no, we're not going to have Nazis come here and tell us how to live. I'm fighting against fascism. I'm fighting against the genuine Nazis in Kiev. The, the Nazis that say Heil Hitler, that love Bandera, who is a terrible war criminal, and those are the guys in the Ukrainian government right now. And the United States government put them in power, and they're criminals. They're psychopaths. I mean, I was in Kiev just last week, and mm -hmm. you don't see parades of people marching down the street with swastikas. Not every day, but they do. You I mean, I, they do. I've been to a military parade as well in Kiev, and I, I didn't see any Nazi paraphernalia at all. Well, that's because the U.S. PR company that uh, Poroshenko has hired has told me, hey, keep the swastikas out. It, it looks bad on American TV. But they're there, man, and you know that they're there. Well, I've seen a couple of individual soldiers from the volunteer battalions mm -hmm. uh, sporting actual, you know, Nazi sort of sim symbols. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen one guy wearing a swastika. I've seen one guy with a sort of SS on his mm -hmm. hat. Mm -hmm. But what I haven't seen is fascist or Nazi ideology is part of the official ideology of the country or the army as a whole. I think that's exaggerated. There are individual skinheads, but this uprising in the East, it's primarily a Russian nationalist uprising. So it would seem the opposite of communist ideology. The declared goals aren't leftist. They're not communist. If anything, they're more right wing. So how does that sit with your ideology? Well, I don't really, I haven't seen a lot of right wing ideology with the guys that I've been working with. Sud Bremeni is a communist organization, and mm -hmm. I am in the Sud Bremeni military unit here. You know, I mean, and it, I don't think it's so much right wing, it's uh, more just self-defense. You know, they, this is their land, their homes, their families. Nazis from the other part of Kiev are coming here. Where we cooked, so here's where we made our tea and stuff. This is a hit from an 82 millimeter mortar. Um, it was about noon, early February. This was our bedroom in here. Uh, we had like six beds all pushed together. I was sleeping in this corner here. And uh, I'd been up all night on guard duty, so I heard, uh, I heard some, some mortars hitting real close. You know, I'm like, you know, and I was still a pretty new soldier at that time. I'm like, oh shit, what should I do? You know, should I get up and put on my, all my gear and grab my weapon and stuff? But I was tired. 
I just said, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep until they tell me to get up. And I rolled over, and I was laying right there with my head in the corner, and within one minute, the fucking bomb hit right there. And if I had gotten up, I'd, the first thing I'd have done before I'd put on anything is I'd have walked right out here in my underwear to walk right here, which is where we made our coffee. Because I don't do nothing until after coffee. And if I had, I'd have gotten a face full of, oops, I would have been blown into pieces. Oh, yeah. As it was, laying right there, my buddy Orion was laying on the other side, so both of our feet were together in the middle. And there's two, I got, I got some pictures of them, two chunks of shrapnel. They came through our sleeping bags, but didn't hit either of us. Wow. When they're, you know, butcher knife size, you know, wow. quarter, quarter pound chunks of steel. Wow. There's no, there's no way. But if I'd have been standing here, I'd have lived. Oh, hell no. Yeah. But, uh, so it's, you know, it's just, that's so many times in this war, you know, just a matter of a few seconds or a few inches. Sure, you know, that you know who you're fighting for, you know. He was fighting on the wrong side. And he picked a fight with some badass dudes that put his ass in the ground. And that's what we'll do to all the Nazis that come to Donbass. We put them in the ground. We take their guns and bury their bones.